Hello everyone and welcome to ZP Productions. Today we'll be look of the Z9's image quality and two photo shoots. The experience of doing two photo shoots with the Z9. So I did two photo shoots, one with Reef and one with Joyce, and they were kind enough to let me uh, use some of their photos raw, <laughs> not the edited one, for the purpose of this review. Now, uh, all the files you see in this particular review can be purchased off the link below, and some of this amount will go to the subjects because they were kind enough to do a collaboration with me and I will thank them for it. So let's talk about today's topic of Z9's image quality and the experience of using the Z9 for photo shoots itself. And in that experience, I also talk about the comparison of skin tones between these three cameras. In addition that, I'll talk a little bit about AF, handling, and show you some images from the photo shoots. So first, let's take a look at the test for image quality. Now, uh, for this particular test, I was shooting two scenes. First is a night scene out of my window, and that was shot full stop under exposed and re-exposed in post-process. Just to see how the noise is like when you do a full stop shadow lift. Next, we will do a full stop overexposure, and that is shooting a bunch of soft toys with, which have tons of different colors, so that you can see how the colors shift across different stops. Now for the test itself, the Z9 will be on electronic shutter because it only has electronic shutter. The A1 will be on electronic shutter because the mechanical electronic has almost no difference from what I see. The R3 will be done on mechanical shutter because there is a difference. If you have seen my R3 review, in fact, take a look at the link up here, there was a difference. And as such, the R3 will be shot purely on mechanical shutter. Now if you're asking electronic shutter, there is about a stop of difference and you can see photons to photo for the dynamic range test there. First, we take a look at the shot out of the window. And you can see it's very dark. And then now I do a proper plus four exposure for all of them. And then let's zoom in and take a look at the various noise level. Now, between the Z9 and the A1, I will say as the Z9 seems to have slightly lesser noise, just a touch lesser noise than the A1. Now, for the Z9 versus the R3, and the R3 on mechanical shutter, I did notice that the R3 has lesser noise per pixel, but just that the noise are a little bit bigger. So overall, I would say as the R3 on mechanical shutter looks very similar to the Z9 on its electronic shutter in terms of noise level, even though you know the R3 is only 24 megapixels itself. Now that is of course four stop shadow lift. Now let's take a look at the other one, which is highlight over exposure and see how much we can you know, recover from it. So let's show you the normal shot again. And then I'll show you two shot overexposed, and then of course I pull it down by two stops. You can see all three cameras seems okay. Now when I go three stops, you will start seeing that the Z9 has a little bit more weird colors in the frame compared to the other two. But if you ask me, all of them were unusable. It's just that the Z9 has a little bit more in the especially orange area. It starts overexposing and having weird colors. And four stops destroys everybody. So from this test itself, at least for the highlight test, I would say as the Z9 performs the worst compared to the R3 and A1, but it's a very small difference. And if you ask me, it's still all unusable. And for the shadow test, I would say the Z9 performed very well, slightly better than the A1, and on par with the R3, which is only half the megapixels for a night scene, and then doing a four stop lift in post process. Overall, the image quality of the Z9 is pretty good, but you can tell that it's actually more biased towards the shadow rather than the highlights. So, you know, overexposed wise, up to two stops is okay. Beyond two stops, it will blow. And that's about it for that. Now let's take a look at some outdoor shoots and my experience with it with the Z9. So today I'll be testing out the Z9 and this is Reef here. She'll be my model and oh. we'll have some photos. Hello. We'll probably compare some photos with the R3 and the A1 or so. I can see some wedding shoot behind us. And that. Enjoy the photos later. Bye bye. <laughs> First, I did with Reef. You can see some photos here. Then, I did with Joyce. Now, some of you ask me when it comes to skin tones, what's the difference between the three cameras? My personal experience is that they look slightly different. But if you post process, and if I shoot with a different camera, I will post process slightly differently based on my taste, you probably can get very close to each other. But that being said, the Canon with the 85 1.2 RF looks closer to the bluish magenta-ish tint, while the Sony with the 85 1.4 Sigma looks closer to the warm greenish tint, and the Nikon Z9 is somewhere in between both of them. 
And really, it is consistent across two shoots. And, you know, if given the exact same setting, this is probably how they will look like. Of course, balancing the brightness and everything too. Now, the thing is, this is raw photo. So, you know, you can see this shot here, which is one is an R3 shot, one is a Z9 shot. Um, they are two different cameras, different poses, but once I post-process them, they look kind of like from the same set. Now, that's about it for the image part. Let's talk about the experience of using the Z9. There are something that I would say, there's one thing I discovered was uh, when you zoom in with the Z9, it lags. I have no idea why. Let me show you one of these videos that I caught using my handphone. You see that uh, the sprite shown on the screen is not synchronized with what's outside. It lags. It's slightly like half the FPS. I have no idea why. When you punch in to do fine tuning manual focus, it just lags. So I'm not sure whether is it a Nikon problem or not. Um, probably Nikon, anybody from anybody who knows Nikon can report it and then see whether we can get a solution to it. I'll probably send in one of these service requests to say why is it lagging so badly when I punch into zoom. Because I just to make sure I did I did it on my Canon too, it doesn't lag. Uh, that's one thing. And for the entire shoot itself, the other thing I did notice is that the Z9, once again, is less resistance to hair in front of the eye, but if the eye is not super clear, it will still focus on the hair in front. The R3 is still the most resilient when it comes to blockage of eye. Um, while the A1 will always catch the thing in front of the eye. So this thing, um, once again for portraiture, I will prefer the R3 over the Z9 when it comes to close-up portraiture where there's a possibility of hair or lashes, especially Asian girls like to put long lashes. The Z9 have less tendency than the A1, but it's still not as good as the R3 when it comes to IAF accuracy on the iris itself. Just a note, close up on the iris, which is something that you may not do very often. And uh, the Z9, other than these two things, is a very positive experience for the entire shoot. The autofocus-wise is relatively consistent. If the subject is not moving, it is always tech sharp. I mean, I rarely need to reshoot any shots with this combination here. Uh, however, with the 40mm, I did notice that I need to reshoot some of the shots. Uh, some shots that I thought were a little soft looks fine on my uh, monitor. So I guess it's because the Z9 do punch in quite a bit when it comes to zooming. But if not, the 85 1.8 is very accurate. Uh, I think I have less than 1% reshoot, which means out of the two shoots which have like 150 over shots, I think I did only two shots reshot because it was not sharp enough using the 85 1.8 here. That is for static subject and the IAF. And I would say it's the IAF feels... Um, how do I say? I think I need a more comprehensive test in the future, but I did notice, at least my personal um, feeling was, it does pick up the eye further than the R3. Similar to the A1, or maybe even better than the A1 slightly, when it comes to picking up the eye. But the R3, when things are a bit further, it picks up the head very well unlike the Z9 or the A1. So, I mean, if it's far enough that the archery feel their head is enough, normally it's sharp enough too. I didn't have any issues with autofocus. But the Z9 seems to see the eye a lot further. However, because of depth of field and stuff, you probably don't make a difference at all. So that's something to note. And then the Z9, when it comes to shooting moving subjects, my personal feeling is that it's sharp enough, but just not like super tech sharp. I'm not sure, I was using 1 to 1000 shutter and I can show you uh, one of these walking shots where the subject is walking towards me. It just feels not like as tech sharp as I would like it to be um, compared to when the Z9 was shooting static objects. So I'm not too sure, really, is it the lens or is it the Z9 or is it my expectation? It looks sharp enough for my monitor, uh, but it just doesn't feel as like crisp kind of sharpness that I'm used to getting in like the Canon system and the Sony system when it comes to subject moving towards me. Um, and when it, but it comes to spinning shot wise, I feel that there's not much difference between all three. So it's only when it walks towards me, then I feel this slight effect. So probably need more investigation on it. Don't take my words fully on that. <laughs> I probably need to try a few times because I just noticed it when I was reviewing the photo on the camera, but when I was seeing it on my monitor, it looks sharp enough, as I said.
So I just noticed in the menu itself, there was an AFC priority setting. Um, for the other cameras, I never set them and they were always very accurate. So on the Z9, there is that function um, that I'm not really sure whether setting it to focus priority will give a significantly better results and will it actually affect things like, you know, your burst rates. Uh, that is something to investigate in future videos. Now, uh, when it comes to real-world handling, one most important thing is the flip screen and the LCD. The LCD is fantastic in real-world. The LCD is truly fantastic in real-world. The flip-out is very convenient and pretty much among all the three cameras, I prefer the handling of the Z9 when it comes to portraiture out in the field. More than the A1 and even more than the R3. For the purpose of photography, just a note. The screen flipping is very useful as I show you one of my shots here. You know, I shoot top down. You know, the ability to just tilt your screen to get whatever angle you want is really nice. And the Z9, because it does a full 90 degrees portrait flip, <laughs> I could really do very low down shots as you can see in this shot here. Very low down shots with ease. While the R3, as I said, you need to flip, 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 flip to just get the shot and then review the shot. It's quite a troublesome thing. But at least you can. The Sony doesn't even give you the option of flipping it portrait wise. So, the Z9's handling, at least when it comes to the screen, is my preferred way of handling. And uh, not only that, the viewfinder, uh, as I said in my last latency test, in fact, just take a look at the link here. Now, in real world, when I was using it, I don't find super huge amount of difference, but I tend to get the shot I want in the first shot. Uh, I think the difference is quite minimal between the three. <laughs> I probably need to shoot like another 10 more shots to give you a more concrete answer. But let me show you one behind the scenes video. And let me show you the shot I did for this camera. And you will notice that it is exactly the best moment in the video too. So maybe my reaction time was great. <laughs> or maybe the Z9's latency is really so low that in real world, I feel that I could really get the shot I want quite easily with the Z9. Uh, you can see in this, uh, all the shots here, most of them were caught nicely flying in air. In fact, that particular shot I, sh I showed you just now was only done once. Um, <laughs> it is a very good result, but it's not like much better than either one of these because most of the time, I could also one shot most of such action shots with either camera. And in fact, the R3, I would just take multi shots because 24 megapixels take very little space. Now, one last thing, we talk about space. So somebody did ask me on the three different files, lossless, compress, uh, the high efficiency, star and high efficiency. So for this shoot, lossless compress was 50 megabytes, um, high efficiency star was 30 megabytes, and high efficiency is 20 megabytes. So between high efficiency star and you know lossless compress is a full 20 megabytes difference, which is quite a significant saving in terms of space itself. And uh, I was shooting mainly in high efficiency star. I don't find the file any different from lossless compress. In fact, I'll provide you the three files to play below. In fact, even high efficiency without the star itself don't feel too much difference. Uh, maybe I need to test a lot more because I just try it out in the shoot to see whether I can even spot the difference in that particular shoot, but I really cannot. It is very insignificant. In fact, let me put all three in a row shot with lossless compress high efficiency star and high efficiency. Uh, I'll provide the files also in the link below so you can see it, purchase it there. But really that's about it. So this is my experience using the Z9 with two photo shoots and of course the image test ahead. Um, how do I feel about the Z9 so far? As a portrait camera, I enjoy it. Um, the screen was good. The viewfinder is great. Uh, general ergonomics is great. The only bugbear I have is that um, if I was in the need to do manual focus or punch-in zooming, the Z9 lacks. And punch-in zooming is something I do very often with the A1 because um, the A1, when you do punch-in, is super accurate. But the Z9, when you punch-in, it lacks, so it was a problem. And the punch-in zooming, unlike the A1, doesn't focus on the center, it just focuses on that punch-in area which means the A1's punch and zooming focus is slightly better than the Z9 too. Now, my experience with the Z9 is still a little bit too limited to actually have a conclusion, especially I only own it for a week. So definitely, the Z9 is a very good camera based on my experience so far. There are things that I enjoy, especially for the purpose of portraiture. But a camera like this is probably not really for just portraiture itself. 
So I probably need to do a little bit more testing. Maybe I loan some super teddy photo lens, bring it out in the wild and shoot some animals. And then maybe I have a conclusion then. Till the next update on Z9 or any of these comparison, I will see you again. Bye-bye.